Hi hey everyone. In this video I want to explain the relationship between the price of a bond and the yield to maturity. Now to make things simple we're just going to deal with zero coupon bonds and we'll talk about treasury security so we don't have to worry about default risk or anything like that. And this is really the simplest type of bonds to work with to understand the relationship. And basically the relationship boils down to this. As the price of a bond increases, the yield to maturity falls. And as the yield to maturity increases, the price of a bond falls. So there's a negative relationship between the two. And there's no real deep mystical reason for why there's a negative relationship. It just comes out, it just falls out of the definition of how we define the yield to maturity. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just show you the formula, do a couple calculations, and then let you go from there. So the notation here we have FV is my abbreviation for face value, P with a B in the subscript is the price of the bond, and a lowercase script I is yield to maturity. Now as it turns out, the price of a bond is related to the face value through this formula. All right. And this is essentially how we're defining the yield to maturity. Now I could have written this equation with you know, the yield to maturity on the left hand side, and if you did it would look slightly different, but it would all boil down to the same thing. Right? So this is the equation that relates the price of the bond here to the face value of the bond, and if you know the price of the bond and the face value, then this is one equation in three unknowns, so if you know the price of the bond and the face value, that's going to go ahead and define the yield to maturity here. Okay, So I'm going to give you two of the unknowns, the price and the face value, and that's going to tell us what the yield to maturity is. So we're going to do this twice, and you're going to see, you know, we're going to get one yield to maturity, and then we're going to do it a second time, and you're going to see, oh, as the price of the bond goes up, the yield to maturity falls. And again, there's no real deep mystical reason for why this is the case. It just falls out of the definition for how we define yield to maturity. Okay, so let me erase all this. Now suppose, for the sake of argument, um, the face value of a bond is $1,000. So suppose I told you that in one year, the U.S. Treasury promises to pay you $1,000. Now how much are you willing to pay to get $1,000 from the um, U.S. Treasury one year from today? Well, let's suppose, for the sake of argument, you're willing to pay $900. So you're willing to give the U.S. government $900 today if they give you $1,000 a year from now. Okay, great. The question is, what is the yield to maturity in that case, or what is the interest rate? And we can go ahead and just use our equation, and as I said, the price of the bond is the face value divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity. Okay, well this is one equation with three unknowns. I told you two of the unknowns over here, so we can just plug in $900 equals 1,000 divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity. Now we're down to one um, equation with one unknown, so let's just go ahead and grind through it. So multiply each side of the equation by 1 plus i, and you'll end up with 900 plus 900 times i is 1,000. So you'll end up with, oh, the yield to maturity here is going to be 100 over 900 equals 0 0.111, and that's actually repeating forever, or 11.1%. Okay? <clears throat> so if you're willing to pay the federal government $900 to get $1,000 a year from now, then the yield to maturity is 11.1%. Okay? Great, but suppose we change it a little bit. Suppose you're willing to pay a little bit more than that. And let's say you're willing to pay up to $950, right? Well, how is everything going to change? Well, everywhere there's a 900, I'm going to have to go ahead and put 950. So I'm going to have to go change that, I'll change that, that'll change, and the ultimate interest rate will change. Okay? So let's see how things change. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're willing to pay up to $950 to get $1,000 a year from now, then this will be 950 plus 950i equals 1,000. Well, 1,000 minus 950 is now going to be 50. And then when we divide through by 950, we're going to have 50 over 950. 
And when we do this, it's going to be 0, 5, and what's the third decimal place? We'll round to 3, or 5.3%. Okay? Now notice, we increase the price of the bond from 900 to 950, and that ended up decreasing the yield to maturity from 11.1% to 5.3%. So there's an inverse relationship between the price of a bond and the yield to maturity. That's the key point that you have to understand for everything else we're going to do in this course. You know, worrying about zero coupon bonds and all of that stuff, that's just kind of window dressing. You can worry about that in a finance course. But in an economics course on money and banking, what you really need to understand is that when the price of a bond goes up, the yield to maturity falls. Likewise, if the yield to maturity rises, that means the price of the bond falls. Okay, so that's the key point, and um, hope you understand it.